So the next thing I'm going to do, and again, once you get the hang of this and you can start to see, now we'll pick up a flow where I'm going to create a snapshot and remove projectile arm. Oops, I have a little typo. I'll fix that. So I can select this arm. And, well, I'll go move. I'll select the arm. And I'm going to reset the orientation for the UCS to be the curve at the beginning. And then just like moving in a straight line, we also have the ability to rotate. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate this component a little bit so that it's dropped down off of this. I'm going to create a new snapshot. I'm going to call this one remove as well, or remove projectile arm, because we're going to do this in two steps. And then I'm going to align the UCS with this base component again. Oh, I selected the wrong component. I'll just undo that. I'll select this component and do a move align the orientation there and move it out of the way. And I'll put it right here next to the projectile. And I'll reorient my view. Okay, so now we are in a position where we can create a new snapshot. I'm going to select that and move it off the assembly. And that snapshot was to remove the weight and we'll zoom up I'll actually create a new snapshot before I move I'm going to rearrange my orientation a little bit and this time I'm going to remove the A-arm and I'm actually going to do a few different components here in this move. I'm going to select, you holding down my shift key, I'm going to select multi com multiple components. Um, I'm going to turn on the move command and I'm going to drag these away from the assembly. Now while I have my this move still activated, I'm going to hold shift down and select this A arm and I'm going to make another move and I'm going to hold shift down and select this base component and I'm going to move it as well. And because I did, again, all three of those moves in the same snapshot, those will all animate at the same time. So let me show you there. I'm going to double-click the previous one, double-click the remove arms, and they all explode at the same time. So now I'm going to create a new snapshot. And this time I'm going to go and get those... retaining clips. Zoom back out. I'm going to right click and up to the left to get a move and I'm going to just explode those. I'm going to create a new snapshot and zoom out a bit. And I am going to move, well, let me get out of the move command so I can select these components here and here and I'm gonna move this one I actually am gonna set the orientation here on this one to this line here and I will drag that off that shaft and create a next snapshot I'm gonna actually go back and name this so I don't get too far ahead of myself so here we had the retaining clips, so I will name that real quick. And then I had remove the arm. And we're at our next snapshot. So here I'm going to switch back to a different view. zoom out a bit and I'm gonna do just like I did on the other side I'm gonna remove these screws the A arm and the base connector all in the same action so I'm gonna move the screws out a bit hold shift down and select this A arm move it out a bit 
and then the base connector and move it out a bit. So now what we can do is actually, I'm going to go ahead and zoom this out just a hair. You can see now all the components uh, disassembled. I'll do this final naming here. And let's go ahead and start our presentation from the beginning and get a feel for where we're at. There might be some minor adjustments we need to make, so we'll go ahead and review it. The clips move out, all the pins are removed. You can see the arm is removed and the weight. And now you can see some of these camera animations are happening while these are exploding, and those I didn't mind so much. Um, let's play it one more time real quick. Let's go back to the beginning point. Um, the first camera view we moved uh, because it was very dramatic, but here um, I actually like these transitions uh, that show that move while things are being exploded. If you don't, you can always go ahead and adjust that. Now I will adjust that last one. That last one is similar to the very first one where we rotate all the way around to the other side of the model. And in that case, I'm going to go ahead and fix that one. Um, I'm going to switch back over to my timeline view. I'm going to scroll all the way to my last one. And this camera view I'm, I'm not a big fan of. So let me go ahead and insert a new snapshot and move that camera into it. And I will go ahead and call this change view as well. So now I'm just going to start from the retaining clips and I'll go ahead and play this. And we can see the camera moves first, then the arm explodes. So that actually looks pretty, pretty good. Um, let me go back to my thumbnail view just to conserve some real estate on the screen and talk about where we go from here. Earlier I had mentioned adding descriptions and here's a good point where we could do that. Um, if you right click on the breadcrumb there's an option for show description and there's also an option for timing. So I'm going to bring both of those up and again it, it, you know, while I said in the beginning it's a very simple interface it doesn't have to be. It can be as complex as you need it to be for the appropriate task. So we really haven't seen a lot of interface up until this point, but here's where we, we can actually make some pretty you know, specific tweaks about how we want the animation to work. Um, we can adjust things like the, the, the way the transition happens between slides. We can change the duration of slides, um, and, or duration of the transitions, and also the duration of the slides. So overall, I think that um, the 0.25 seconds for each slide is a little bit fast, so if I select the very first slide and I scroll all the way to the right and select the, hold shift down and select the right, the, the, the last frame or snapshot, I can actually change the, dim, the, the timing on each slide to one second. And you can see they all update, so you can do bulk updating. And then the other thing we brought up was this description box down here. So we can go to each specific point in the in the instructions and we can say this is the starting position and we can go to the second step and we can say remove projectile and set aside now these are pretty basic because this is a fairly simple assembly but these descriptions would come in very handy if there were important instructions. If you were removing a, a something, a container that had chemicals in it, you could uh, put a warning in here or special instructions on how to handle it um, or make note of special tools that are needed, things like uh, of that nature. Um, and again, these descriptions will be shown in the exported animations. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but you get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off just to get back to a simple interface. And we can begin talking about uh, exporting the information. Actually, before we do that, let's do one last thing. I'm going to go to the very last slide and show another uh, very useful feature. I'm going to zoom out a bit on this one. 